Okay. So again, let's talk about the results section of your paper class. This is the third one after the methodology. Remember, we are done with the introduction as well as the methodology. You had your proposal defense and you are waiting for your paper na lang to be approved by your advisor. The next step will be the data gathering procedure. And then after you have gathered your data, you will be making now the results section of your paper. Now, what is this section? <clears throat> this is where you're going to present the gathered information or the gathered data. Okay? So that is based sa inyong methodology. But then again, you are going to report here the findings of your study. And uh, I will be teaching you how to arrange in a logical sequence the results of your study. But take note that we are just going to present the data or the information. Interpretations and analysis should not be included here. Please remember presentation of the data only. All the interpretations will be placed in the last section, which is the discussion section. So what are the importance of a good results section of the paper? Um, <clears throat> This is actually the body and soul of your of your paper, no? The heart and soul, I mean. Uh, since research is about investigating something, studying about something, uh, then it is very important for us to report all the important findings na nakuha natin during the investigation. But <clears throat> when you make the results section, Always remember that though you have the data, you have the collected information, um, you do not prove anything actually. You just have the data. That's it. Uh, this is the, these are the data of the investigation. But again, please remember before you are going to make the results section of your paper, we do not prove anything. We can just add up to the body of knowledge, but everything should be further studied or everything should be confirmed or verified first before we can really say that we have proved something about our research. Now, another thing that you have to take note is for the length of the results section, it really doesn't matter whether you have a lengthy one or a short one because the length of the paper is dependent on your SOP, the statement of the problem. If you have a lot of SOP, then I am expecting that you will also have a lot of tables and a lot of data to be presented in the results section. So again, this is dependent on what questions you ask or you included in the statement of the problem. Okay, so you should avoid data class that is not really asked in your SOP. Uh, that's one problem that we always encounter because researchers tend to include data that is not really asked hindi na ask sa statement of the problem. So, kung hindi siya kasali sa SOP, please do not include those things in the results section. So, <clears throat> yung ano, yung results section natin, yung important data lang talaga na sasagot doon sa questions in the SOP. And then the last part should also contain a synthesis or a summary, meaning we have to summarize our findings of the study and just highlight the key findings. Now, do not forget to use class past tense for all the verbs during the presentation of the findings since, uh, please remember, you are already done by this time with the methodology. You are done on everything, so past tense na lahat. Tapos na yung data gathering. Now for the sequence, take note of the sequence of the presentation of the data. It should also follow the sequence of the statement of the problem. So if ever 
Uh, your question number one is asking about the demographic profile of your respondents. Then your data number one in the results section should should be about the demographic profile. So nakapasunod siya. Okay, that is true also for experimental study. So whatever is your number one SOP, that should also be your data number one. And um, this should follow in this, uh, I mean, the presentation of the data should follow this order. You have to have first the non-textual presentation, like the table or the graphs. Okay, the, again, either the table or, or the graphs, and then followed by the textual presentation. Meaning we have the option class whether to use the tables in presenting our data or we can use graph. But um, all should be followed by the textual presentation. Do not forget that. So we have again three ways of presenting our data. We have here the textual, tabular, and graphical. Now, the most commonly used non-textual element is <coughs> excuse me, the table. So, in the table, we are going to organize and summarize. We are going to compress our data. And please do not forget now we don't include raw data here in the table. So, for example, you have 100 respondents. It does not necessarily mean you have to place everything, all the 100 answers in, in the table. Now, you have to summarize, you have to compress your data. Now, I have told you this one is the most commonly used non-textual element for the presentation of data because it has the advantage of being easily understood even if you don't read the textual uh, part anymore. Uh, if the table is properly organized, then it will be easier for our readers to comprehend and understand the data included there. Okay, so that's um, the advantage of using the table. We don't need to explain a lot of things. You just have to construct the table properly. Now, in constructing the table, you need to have the following. You have the title. The title is table mismo, followed by a number. So, for example, table number one. And then you have to have a heading. So, table number one, example, uh, table number one, demographic profile of the respondent. So, that will be um, the heading, demographic profile of the respondent. So, the heading will actually show the readers what is included or what are included in the table. Now, aside from the table, we can also use graphical presentation, but if, if and only if necessary, and if only applicable in your study. We seldom see graphical presentation. Most of the time, um, the demographic profile presentation may use graphical presentation, especially the pie graph. Okay, so just like this are the pie charts. Um, like um, your question number one, uh, what is the demographic profile of the respondents in terms of sex? So you may present the result of the study or the result there using a pie chart um, and then properly showing how many percent is female and how many percent yung male. Ito yung mostly nakikita ko for a graphical presentation. Um, I seldom see the organizational chart, the pictographs, lalo na si cosmographs, the line graphs, and the flow charts. Ano lang siya, depende lang sa uh, needs sa study. I can see bar charts if ever there should be comparisons, like example, between treatments. You can use the bar charts. Pero as, as far as I have observed, most of the panelists uh, don't really want to have the graphs in the results section. Most of the time, uh, they will recommend for you to make a table again and then transfer the graphs in the appendices. So, um, Suggestion ko na lang early or early as now, um, as much as possible, if we have quantitative data or numerical data, let's just construct tables na lang and then followed by a 
textual presentation. So remember, in the textual presentation, you just have to describe the data that you have included either in the tabular presentation or in the graph. Okay? So highlighting the key findings or highlighting the most important things you have discovered in the data you have gathered. Take note that you should not include any discussion or um, any interpretation of the results. You just have to describe what is in the table and what does the numbers uh, in the table show us. Okay? So, for example, demographic profile, you just have to uh, reiterate in the textual presentation that, for example, 50% of the respondents are male and then the remaining 50% are female. That's it. No other things that you need to include. Okay, so in writing the results section, you, you can provide a synthesis or a synopsis followed by the explanation of the key findings okay or the description only not really the interpretation okay so you have to follow again the sequence of the statement of the problem but you have to have the table first and then followed by the textual presentation you have to finish describing the first table first before proceeding to the next group of data now, problems to avoid in making the results section. Number one, you don't need to discuss again or interpret your results. We will be doing that in the discussion section. So you don't have to explain the findings and you don't have to report any background information about the findings of your study. All of that, again, will be done in the discussion section. Now, another thing that you need to avoid is ignoring negative results. Plus, um, uh, negative result is still a result and we have to report that. So, as much as possible, we really need to report negative results even though hindi natin sila gusto. As much as possible, especially for experimental studies, we really want to highlight that our plant materials are effective However, there are really cases and hindi natin hawak yan kung hindi talaga siya effective, wala tayong magagawa. So, there are instances that the results will be negative and then again, you don't have to ignore those things. We really need to report even the negative results. But please do not include in the results section the raw data or, the, or any calculations that you have made or you have done in your study. Everything, all the raw data and all the calculations will be placed in the appendices. Okay? And then be factual and concise as possible if you have, if you have gotten a negative result. Uh, we have to be honest. And we really have to report that you should not falsify any, any result, meaning um, ang iba kasi gagawa-gawa ng result and then may nahuhuli talaga yan. Even in the previous batches, merong nahuhuli. And uh, that will be a burden in your part, a, a very big problem because the panelist can really see whether uh, you made your own result or you falsify a result and you will be asked either to repeat the subject or to repeat the experiment all over again okay so you be ha you have to be factual and concise also in reporting your data and you should not report um the same data ha, repeatedly if you are done with table number one that's already done you have to move on to table number two and just focus to focus in table number two do not go back uh, on what is already presented in table number one. So you have to really construct your table in a manner that is easily comprehend uh, or easily understood by um, your readers. Okay? So yun yung mga things that you need to know about the results section of your paper. Do you have questions? I'll be showing you examples, uh, sample research uh, para alam nyo kung paano gawin yung ating results. I wait. 
let me open it first. I think I have downloaded. Oh, yeah. So the first one that I will show you is an example of the results section of a quantitative descriptive study. Because most of you here, the study is quantitative descriptive. It can be correlational or comparative or whatsoever. But um, anyway, descriptive siya. So this one is a study of the previous batch. I, I don't know if I can give you a copy of this, but if you want, um, let me just ask first the, I know, the authors of this study if they will give us permission to give you a copy. Wait lang, let's move on. After the, okay, again, uh, yeah. after the methodology. So this is how you're going to make the results section. The title is results, okay? The title is results. And you should start with an introductory paragraph before, before you present the table and the textual presentation. You have to have an introductory paragraph um, ano lang, reviewing the audience or the readers of the objectives of the study. And you may also um, give a brief discussion on uh, what, they, what they can expect in this section. Okay, so yun lang, very, very uh, short paragraph or paragraphs introductory paragraph for the results section. After the introductory paragraph, here goes the table. Again, it has to have the title, table number one, and then the heading. The heading should be uh, talking about what is included in that table. So just like this, since it, SOP number one of this group or, of, or this study is asking about the demographic profile in terms of educational attainment. So that's their table number one also. So as you can see, uh, it can, the data here can easily be understood that among the respondents, ilang percent yung college graduate and yung master's graduate and so on. And look at the, after the table, look at the textual presentation. It's very brief. Because again, we don't need to interpret these numbers. We will do that on the discussion section. So you just have to present and to describe the numbers or the things that we have included in the table. Again, in logical sequence, ito, this will follow the questions in your SOP. So just like this, their next one is demographic profile in terms of occupation. And then again, followed by <clears throat> um, what do you call that? This one, the, the textual presentation, meaning you just have to present that these are the occupation of the respondents. So, merong percent, uh, nag-highlight sila na a large percentage of their respondents are actually unemployed. And if employed, ito yung mga possible na mga employment okay you ha they have the monthly income before they really moved on to the next question so class um for those who have questionnaires you really have to place all the questions in the results section i know you are in the process of validating your questionnaire so for example meron kayong limang questions or sampung questions jan for this part you really have to place everything but uh, i told you a while ago you don't need to place the raw data so that is the reason why they only presented the mean so like, like the participants, if they have 100 respondents here, the mean for question number one is 1.91. And you have to give verbal description or interpretation. Okay? So aside from the mean, kasi remember in presenting the results, kailangan easily understood siya. Kasi pag nilagay nilang dyan 1.91, 1.91, the readers will not really know what do you mean by 1.91. 1 
So, ito yung kanyang verbal interpretation. Nag-disagree yung mga participants or mga respondents on this um, question or in this statement. So, to interpret that since this is about the level of medical fake news and fear mongering since they disagree with this statement meaning uh, low yung kanyang parang influence on the respondents. So you can add the verbal description or the interpretation. You have to make this, okay? You may adopt it from the other studies if you can see another study that is related to your own study. Or you can make your own verbal description and interpretation. Following range lang. Uh, Mag-range range lang kayo sa inyong study. Actually, meron silang range dito. I don't know kung saan nilagay. I think nasa... Um, Oh, wala dito. Nasa appendices later. I will show you bakit nila nasabing disagree and bakit low and so on. They made actually a range for this. So take note. Ayan na, naka-table na. And just a little description of what is in the table. Okay, so that is also true for the other tables that they have. So medyo, uh, hindi naman lengthy yung kanilang result section um konti lang din kasi ang question nila i think they have they have three questions here in the sop and then the rest uh, will be in the discussion section meaning the interpretation of all the data they have gathered will be placed here even the demographic profile na interpretation is placed here in the discussion section Okay, so what does it mean kung marami ang babae, kung marami ang lalaki, and so on. Okay, so ito yung, let me just check. Ha. Kung titingnan ninyo, ma, mahaba masyado compared sa result section ng discussion section. Marami kasi talagang interpretation for those numbers. It's just that nakahiwalay. Nakahiwalay ito. And then, sa so yun, hanapin natin yung kanilang range. You may also adopt this if ever applicable in your study. Don't know kasi sa nila nilagay yung range. This is the map. This is the Pearson. Uh, this one is the range. Okay. So they made this actually. And if you can see, the range is actually pantay. The interval 1.1 one to 1.8, 1.81 to 2.60. And then they had the verbal interpretation. I believe you also have your verbal interpretation or verbal descriptions, I mean. And meron pa ring interpretation depende sa hinahanap nyo sa study niya. But you can adopt this if ever applicable. So look at your uh, research there and check whether this interpretations are applicable or not. Okay, so that's how you make the results section of a descriptive study. Any question? Or you want to clarify something about the results section? Let me just look for um, an experimental one. You can you can send your questions sa chat if ever meron. Ay, ma'am, sa ano gud, ma'am? Yes. Di siya ano sa ano mga results pero sa grammar yan gud, ma'am. Allowed ba sa outside sa school, ma'am? Um actually no. Uh, all the grammarian should be coming sa school. Kasi automatic siyang um Sina charge sa inyo. So magdoble ang inyong bayad if you are going to have another grammarian outside the school. Kay automatic siya ang charging sa inyong statement. Okay. Anything else? Okay, yeah, ma'am. Yung ma'am, same. Ay, ano man? <laughs> same din po sa ano, ma'am? Sa statistician, ma'am? Ang sa, sa, stat, ang sa statistician, pwede. Kasi hindi siya chinarge, hindi siya kasali doon sa guidelines in charging. So, hindi kasali sa 
sa statement ninyo ang statistician, hindi kasi ma... Um, anong tawag dyan? Hindi maisa yung charging sa statistician kasi nakadepende yon sa sa data ninyo kung masyadong marami and masyadong complicated, mas mahal kasi yon sa for the statistician. So the school cannot charge it sa inyo na uniform. So you can look for a statistician outside the school who can help you in the data analysis and interpretation. Thank you po, ma'am. Okay, pero sa grammarian class, the charge yeah, yeah. kina siya matik sa inyo. So you cannot, um, what do you call that? You cannot tap someone from the outside. Okay? Uh, pero ma'am, sino pang grammarian namin, ma'am? Um, depende sa ma-assign sa grupo ninyo. Uh, last year, na-assign... Sino ang in-assign ni Dean? Sa MedTech, ang in-assign ni Dean last year si Ma'am Palapar. So, siya nag sa lahat ng MedTech studies. So, yung ibang courses, uh, merong, merong department na na-assign kay Ma'am Gian. Gian na Quinones. Meron ding na-assign kay... What's that? Pero din na-assign kay Sir, Sir Ian na Hugar, yung, yung secretary ni Dean. Mga ano kasi yan sila, mga major in English. So sila yung nagagrammarian sa school. So, pero depende kasi kung sinong ma-assign sa department ninyo, malalaman natin yan pag magpasa na kayo ng paper. Okay. okay po. Ma, pero mga kailan po yan, ma'am? Pagpassing, uh, before defense po ba yan, ma'am? Ano, uh, that that will be after defense. So meaning, uh, during the uh, final defense, hindi pa nag yung paper ninyo. Mahirapan kasi tayo kung magpag kayo muna before the final defense, tapos maraming ipabago ang panel, magdoble ang bayan ninyo sa inyo ang grammarian. So that, that will be after the defense. Okay. Ah, okay po ma'am. Pero ma'am, uh, pwede po paki ano ma'am, i-indicate good lahat ng shoulder good namin na uh, payment uh, regarding sa thesis ma'am. Um, uh, sa school within sa school na po ma'am. This this semester ang i-charge sa inyo I think ano 950 950. Ano yan siya? 500 <clears throat> 500 sa defense fee. That includes everything na panel plus um, food and uh, the other things that we need to prepare for the defense. So that's 500. Tapos 200 for the grammarian. And what's the other one? Kulang ito 50. Ah, 250 for the REC review. So yun yung i-expect nyo na i-charge ng school sa inyo. So makikita nyo yan siya sa in yung statement. I just don't know when. So maybe sa midterms or sa finals. Yan kasi din yung chinarge last year and I think wala namang changes. Wala, walang proposal for for changes in in the fees. Ganun pa rin walang increase and so on. So I think 950. Lahat. Lahat, lahat. Pero... Ganito, if your study is experimental and if you're going to conduct the experiments sa school and you will be using um, chemicals galing sa school, another charging yun. But I don't know how much kasi depende yan siya sa kailangan yun na gamit. Ano lang, ang, ang aparatos wala yun syempre. Ang paggamit sa lab wala din. Pero yung mga chemicals lang kasi hindi... As far as I know, hindi siya included sa tuition ninyo. And hindi hindi, hindi din kasi nila maisa yung charging for that. Kasi nga, um, hindi naman lahat experimental ang study. So, nakaseparate talaga siya. So, be careful when you are going to request for chemicals sa school. Do not uh, waste the chemicals. Kaya basig makulang, magpadugang na sad mo. Another charging na pagdo siya. So, please keep that in mind pag magsugod na mo sa inyong experiments. Siyempre, itong mga 
mga descriptive ang study, wala na may ingato ng mga charges, kaya dilitan mo manginahanglan o chemicals sa school. Pero you can actually, you have the option actually to buy your own chemicals. If ever you don't want to request sa school and you can look for supplier sa needed chemical ninyo, you can actually buy outside and just and just bring it sa school and do your uh, experimentation sa school. Pwede yun. Kasi last time, they did not ask for like ethyl alcohol. They did not ask or requested kasi the ethyl alcohol. So they bought their own as well as uh, merong grupo last year na kailangan nila ng mga sugar, mga ganon during the experiment. So hindi na sila nagpa-charge sa school. Nagdala na lang sila sa sariling asukal. <laughs> so yun yung nakita ko. Pero you are allowed to do that. Okay? Kung dili mo gusto. Kaya wala, wala man pagbuta ka balo kung pila ang i-charge sa school sa inyo. Ha? So Kung gusto ninyo nga ma- magkaroon mo o projection sa inyuhang magasto, palit na lang mo inyuhang chemical. So, ilista ninyo na daan sa ang inyuhang kailangan. Most likely, since you're going to extract, kailangan nyo ng alcohol. So, you can buy all alcohol. Ay, not the alcohol nga nakagalon na kanang na nakabutang 70% alcohol. Ha? The alcohol talaga na um, nabibili for laboratory use. Murag, ang isa kalitro ana na sa 100 kapin, if I'm not mistaken, you can use the technical grade na chemical. Diba, meron man tayong mga AR grade or yung mga ACS, mga reagent ACS, na mga high high grade of chemicals. Um, pero sa research since for extraction purposes lang naman siya, you can use the technical grade, which is way cheaper compared to the other grades of chemical. So, yun yung technical grade na alcohol na sa 100 plus ang isang litro. Kung ipacharge siya sa school, I don't know. <laughs> Kasi hindi ako yung may hawak sa laboratory sa school. Okay, anything else? Wala na. Wala. So, ito yung sa results section of the experimental na study. Actually, the same thing. You will have your introductory paragraph. Um, you will review the reader about the objectives of your study. And you can actually give a synopsis of what you have done in the study. What methods did you use? And then after that, um, you may present, this is the discussion section, you may present na the table. What is, whatever is your number one question in the SOP that is still the same, that should be your number one table. So you may, ano, you may divide this, for example, the first SOP is asking about the dose. So that is the title of the first part of the data presentation. And then you may actually start with a textual presentation, but you just you just need to um, give a background of what the reader should expect to see in table number one. And you, it may also follow another part of the textual presentation highlighting the most important thing you have discovered here sa mga numbers na ito. And then do not forget, just like sa descriptive na study, you should not present numbers all only, but you have to provide descriptions or verbal interpretation uh, so that the numbers here will be easily understood by your readers. So that is also true ha, for the other tables. So most likely class, um, both descriptive and experimental research will use uh, tabular presentation and textual presentation in the results section. Okay, So again, highlighting only the most important results, even um, including the negative ones. And then Again, the interpretation will be done here in the discussion section. So we seldom use the graphical presentation for the results. Okay? So yun yung, yun lang. Hindi naman siya, hindi, hindi siya actually ganun kahirap gumawa ng results section. 
you just have to make sure na um the the numbers are easily or i i mean properly organized para for easy easy na pag-understand ng inyong results okay mas mahirap gumawa ng discussion section because again you will be interpreting those numbers okay questions so far 